Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and this is a quick tutorial on how to calculate standard deviation and standard error of the mean using Google Sheets. Um, so we're going to take the exact same data set that we worked on calculating the SEM and the standard deviation in class, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter that in. So the first thing you're going to do is on your iPad, you're going to open up Google Sheets, um, which if you have not added, you, you need to go ahead and download that. And we're going to create a new sheet by clicking the plus, and I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call this one germination of seeds because that's what this data is. But you should call yours something else because you haven't done a germination of seeds lab this week. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the titles in. So I'm going to do Petri dishes. And then the next one was dark, and the next was light. And I'm going to go ahead and actually um, just number Petri dishes 1 through 10. Um, I know that we actually had the treatments set up as uh, two dishes each, but I'm just going to go ahead and for the purposes of being fast right now, just label them. Um, just one of them because otherwise we'll be here all day and then you're going to type your data in so 12 8 all right so now that I've got all of the data entered in uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually calculate a mean um, and the mean is just the average now I could go ahead and just do that right here by actually typing the function in but um, I want to go ahead and I want to take these two cells right here and I want to copy and paste them down at the bottom. And that'll make more sense in a couple minutes why we're doing that. But one of the things that we're going to use the, the sheet for is actually creating our data table for our, um, our lab report or our poster presentation. And so I'm just going to use those as my headings. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in mean. And then to actually um, find the mean, you are going to go ahead and type in, um, you can do this in Excel um, the same way. Uh, we're going to do it in Google Sheets. We're going to do most of our calculations actually in Google Sheets on the, on the Mac Airs. So I'm going to show you how to calculate the average on your iPad because it's something that I think you should be able to do on your iPad, but we're going to do the standard deviation and the SEM on the Mac Air, so I'm going to cut over to that. So you'll see both. So to actually enter a formula on your iPad, you just hit equals. Um, so equals, and then what we're going to have is we're going to have the average of all of these. So I want to start at this column, which is B2. And I want to go all the way down to B11. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type average B2 colon B11. Close parentheses and then hit return. And that's going to go ahead and you see that gives me the average there. So I'm going to just uh, copy that and then I'm going to paste it in the, the cell directly next to it. And I'm just going to edit that. So now I'm in column C, so I'm just going to edit that so it says C. And so you see, you can go ahead and you can type your formulas directly into the iPad, but it's a lot easier to actually do the formula manipulation in the full version of Google Sheets. But you can easily get your data typed in on your iPad. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to open up that same document on my Google Drive. So it's going to be in my recent, hopefully, germination of seeds. And so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the standard deviation. Um, and I'm going to do that by using the standard deviation formula or the standard deviation function. So all I'm going to do is type equals standard and you can see it's already identified standard deviation. So I just click there and then I want to go ahead and I want to select all of the cells that were in that range. So I want everything there. And then I hit enter 
and that's going to give me the standard deviation. And then I can actually highlight here and drag across and it will give me the standard deviation for my other data. Now to calculate the standard error of the mean, um, the standard error of the mean, remember, is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, so the number of um, the number of data points that I have, the number of x variables, so or not x variables, but you know these. So I've got 10, right? So it's really just going to be my standard deviation, 4.19, divided by um, 10. So I could just type that in, um, but we're going to do something a little different. That way the, the sheet's a little more usable if you added more data. So I'm, instead I'm going to hit equals, and then I'm going to type in the location of the square or just select that square. So I'm going to select that square, B16, and then I'm going to do divided by and then I want the square root function, so SQRT is square root. And then what I'm going to do is I could type in 10 right here. And in fact, I'm going to just type in 10 on this one so you can see what happens. There you go. I've got the standard error. On this one, I want to show you a different function. So on this one, I'm going to have the standard deviation. Um, so C16 divided by the square root of, so now I'm going to use what's called a count function. So let me make this a little bigger. I'm going to use a count function, so I'm going to type count. And then it's going to give me another parentheses. And then all I do is I highlight all of my data points. And then I hit enter, and it's going to, you see the function up here? It's C2 through C11, so it's counting how many things there are, C2 through C11, which is 10, rather than me typing the 10 here. So now if I went in and I added more data points in this area, um, it would go ahead and it would, it would automatically adjust that and I wouldn't have to manipulate the formula. So I could go ahead and I could make this into a little, uh, little table right there, and I could do some formatting on that table to go ahead and make it look nicer. Um, I could go in here and highlight these, and I could go to format number, and I could go to number here, and that would go ahead, and by default it's going to set it to two decimal places. So I could go ahead and do that to clean my table up. Um, if I really wanted to, I could insert a row there, or a column there rather, and now I could like screenshot that and just input that as a picture or cut and paste it and input it into a, a lab report as a table. What we want to do is we actually want to create a graph. And so um, what I told you we were going to do for this was create a bar graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our means and our variables. And I'm going to go to insert chart. And we are going to insert a column chart. I know you call it a bar graph. But uh, if we want it vertical, it's, it's a column chart. So I'm going to select column, and then I'm going to select insert, and it's going to give me this giant graph. Let me zoom out just a little. It's going to give me this giant graph. Um, and you cannot do this part. Everything else that we've done, you can do just through actually typing the formulas in your iPad. This part you cannot do on your iPad. You have to use uh, a computer to actually enter the chart itself, the graph itself. So what I'm going to do here is if you notice it starts the bottom of my, my y-axis is 8 and I don't want it to be. So I'm going to set the bottom of my y-axis to be 0. I'm okay with the 20 so I'm going to leave that to be the same. I don't like this here on the right hand side for a legend. I like that at the bottom so I'm going to put that at the bottom. Um, and then here I'm going to go ahead and um, change this. I don't really want that to say mean. I want that to say condition. So I'm going to edit my horizontal axis. And do that. And for my chart title, I will do uh, rate or germination of seeds in light versus dark. Now, for my y-axis, I need to edit my y-axis by going here and doing the left vertical axis title. 
So that's going to input it because I didn't type it earlier. I can go in and I can change it there. Left vertical axis title, this is going to be the number of seeds germinated. It's actually the, uh, the mean number of seeds germinated. All right, now I need to put error bars on here. So this is the way I do that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to advanced edit and I will scroll down. This is way too big. I'm going to scroll down to where it says um, error bars. And I'm going to set my error bars to be constant. This is the easiest way to do this. And I'm just going to get rid of this 10. And instead of 10, I'm going to just type in what it says there. So I'm going to type in 1.33 and update. And my error bars miraculously appeared. You actually don't have to hit update right away. You can go ahead and you can actually just um, tab out of it and then do the next one. So for light, I want my error bars to be constant and 1.05. And so you can see I hit the tab button there and it went ahead and it, it gave me my other error bar. So now I have my graph. And when you're ready to go ahead and save this, the easiest way to deal with this is to go ahead and just go up here to save image. And it will ask you what you want to do with it and just click save the file. And then once you have that file saved, So my downloads look way more confusing than your downloads, I'm sure. So once you have that image saved, so let's say that this is my image, you're just going to go ahead and drag it into your Google Drive, wherever you want it in there, and it will automatically upload. So I hope that helps um, your confusion with calculating the standard error of the mean in Google Sheets. The standard deviation by default is going to show up. If you chose to do it in a different application, if you have the standard deviation, just go ahead and divide that by the square root of your total number of samples, and then you can draw those on uh, by hand if you need to. If you have any questions, just send me an email or come into tutorials.